to speed quickly. It does. As yes. It, you know, the, the the P1 is all not high. It's like an yeah, animal yeah, claw yeah, at the yeah. ground. This thing is like a panther. It just absolutely. It's just extremely smooth, extremely quick. You'd almost think it was all-wheel drive in some ways. The way that it does the yeah, acceleration. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really yeah. quite fast. Today we're being visited once again by Automotive Royalty. This is the McLaren Speedtail. Uh, just take a look at this thing. It's a pretty amazing car to see in person. I I've seen it in magazines and of course in, in videos, but it's not till you see it in person you realize just what a clean design it is. And the design is really what stands out. I mean, technically, horsepower wise, all of that is pretty amazing too. Right now I'm just focusing on the design because this is what aerodynamics is all about. This car does an excess of 250 miles an hour. I think it's this and the Bugatti Chiron uh, could probably swap which one is the fastest. They're pretty close, but I think this is probably more aerodynamic. Uh, just look how smooth it is. I mean, and, and the way this tapers off here at the end, if you were going to Art Center in uh, Pasadena, uh, the design center there, to study, this is probably one of the uh, designs you would be studying. In fact, the man who designed this went there, but we'll find all that out in just a minute. Let me bring in uh, the gentleman behind getting us this car here today, uh, Paris Mullen. Paris, come on in. Now you're uh, Director of Special Projects at McLaren. Beverly oh, with Hills. McLaren Beverly Hills, okay, correct. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, th this is a little bit different. This is not a production car. This is the pre-production model, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. So a customer bought it, but you guys had it done in this color, right? Yeah, when, when, uh, when we were approached by McLaren um, for being kind of the number one dealer in the world, um, this was kind of awarded to us. They said that Albert, which it's codenamed as, was going to be turned into a full production spec car. So the, the, the chassis, the kind of the, the heart and bones of the car from the prototype were gonna remain in it, but they're gonna do all the, all the finishing touches on it. Right. And so, um, yeah, we decided to do it in the same livery that Albert was in. So it, it's to commemorate the original F1 by yeah. Gordon Murray, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. So the color fades from Weno Gray, which is the color that McLaren won Le Mans mm -hmm. in 1995, and it fades to the same silver that the prototype uh, F1 was shown in Monaco, okay. magnesium silver. And obviously it's an all carbon fiber body. Yep. Okay, and I, I don't know how you, just that you see this sliver of, what is that, maybe a tenth of an inch? Yeah. Uh, boy, that's pretty amazing. All the arrow lines are actually exposed carbon that, that somebody had to hand mask off each one before they did the paint fade. So and I'm then assuming this off. is not Earl Shive. You didn't send it down. <laughs> no, again. no, yeah. no. This is this is a McLaren Special Operations at their finest right here. Yeah, this seems like MI5 and yeah. the FBI and everybody else. I mean, this is really a special. I can't imagine how much work was involved. 12 weeks. 12, 12 weeks, weeks just to do the paint. Okay. Well, the great. The wife comes in. I don't like the color. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's back to the drawing board. Back to the, no, it, well, it, it certainly emphasizes the speed, you know. It makes, it, yeah. And just the way it, it tapers off here. What is the coefficient of drag on this? Do you know? Uh, 0.278, okay. I believe. Well, which, which ironically is the same as my 1938 Tatra. <laughs> which is Czechos of well, I guess we haven't come a long ways, I guess that's Well, no, but it? the thing is, see, in the old days, they traveled at 40 or 50 miles an hour. So aerodynamics was for 40 or 50 miles an hour. Yeah, I don't think they this were This has a tremendous amount of downforce, which it would probably be down to 0.00 something if you yeah. didn't have downforce. So that's what sort of keeps it on the road. So it, it's amazing how much science and engineering goes. Even here, these are, well, they're not rear view mirrors, but rear view cameras. When you yep. start it, those come out. Okay, yep. and that, that interrupts the flow of air as well. Those go away, so when you put it in velocity mode, when you're trying to achieve this 250 miles per hour, those actually go in, and really the only thing that starts to create drag uh, uh, is the ailerons in the rear, they're actually flexible. Right. And so those will come up and actually put more downforce on the rear to keep it stable 
as the car starts to move around at above 200. Are those wheel covers? Am I, is that Yeah, those time? are wheel covers, yeah. Okay. They're static, they're stationary. Okay. So they have a, a special mechanism that basically allows the wheel to spin and those stay in place. I see. And how do you, how do you even get those off? Is there a special tool there? I'm, I'm sure there is. I've never had to take one off, okay. but. Pretty amazing. Now, what does this weigh? 3,500 pounds. Okay. Now, somebody might say 3,500 pounds, that seems heavy, but you gotta remember this is not meant to be a track car. It's meant to be a luxury. It's got the nice interior, leather, it's got air conditioning, it has all, plus all the safety equipment you need for a road car, just all of those things. I mean, if you got rid of a lot of that, it'd probably be under 3,000 pounds. Yeah. Unlike some of the other McLarens, which are just like the Senna and some of the just- Very race inspired, race cars. Yeah. This is meant to be, if you're gonna try to get from here to San Francisco in 20 minutes, this is what- With three people, yeah, three absolutely. People and luggage. Yeah, and that's luggage. right, that's yeah. right, yeah. That was always like the original F1. He's got the two luggage compartments on it. Cause when, when Gordon designed that, he designed it not to be a track car, not to even win Le Mans, just to be a fast road car. And it was so good as later modified and then won Le Mans. Yep. That's probably the last car you could drive to Le Mans, win the race and drive home again in. So this is kind of an homage to that. They built 106 of these, which Correct. mirrors the exact number of F1s. F1s that they built as well. So, yeah, I mean, I like this because at some point, you really can't, you're not gonna go 250 anywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's really, no. it's really a place you no, can- Unless you live next to the Bonneville Salt Flats. Right, right, that's right about or something it. like that. And then it's all filled with salt after yeah. you do a yeah. run and then you're really screwed. But I mean, as a design exercise, as theater on wheels, it's, it, it really is unbelievable because it just looks like the future. You it know? does. You know, whenever you watch those, even things from the, from the 40s, they have this sort of streamlined yeah. shape to it, you know? A very mid-century modern kind right, of, we're right. going to Jetson's space. Now this is a hybrid, correct? Correct. But it, you can't run on pure EV. No, no, it's only- So the hybrid system is there to assist the engine. Correct. Okay, okay. so when you, when you step on the gas, the hybrid system spins the transmission, allows the engine to spin faster, that eliminates that millisecond of, with turbines, you put your foot in, uh, Lag, and you go. Yeah, so exactly. the engine, the engine, it's torque filled basically. Correct, and, and gets it up, gets it that thousand horsepower that it needs to reach that 250 mile an hour right. top speed. Right, right, so okay, and uh, it, it's paddle shifters? Yes. Uh, dual clutch obviously, seven yep. speed? Yep. Okay, yeah, so it, it, it's standard McLaren on that front. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I always say McLaren's my favorite car company because A, it's new. For the whole of the 20th century, you had car companies going out of business. Yeah. Then you come to the new millennium and suddenly have new companies, Tesla, McLaren, just a lot of companies coming along, which is exciting to see because you just hate to see everything go down to just three or four three, yeah. multinational companies. It breeds know. competition. You've exactly. been, you're getting the best out of everyone. Exactly. And, and McLaren seems to be doing very well in that yeah. regard. So it's, ex, it's exciting, it's exciting. And this is never meant to be a race car or a track car, purely a high-speed luxury GT. car. Almost yep. like if you wanted the, the fastest Rolls Royce, it, it's basically sort of in that, in that vein of thinking. Yeah, no, comfort was definitely a factor yeah, in it. Yeah. Now come around and look at the rear end of this thing. This is- It is like a Bonneville salt flat car, that whole it idea does look of like just a, the a elongated bodywork. And when you see it from the back, it just looks like, you know, like, like you're following some Star Wars. Yeah, vehicle, you know? oh yeah, no, it looks like from outer space. Now this is something I didn't think was possible. These are L-rounds back here. They, they flex to give you downforce, yep. correct? Yep, up to five inches that will actually bend without any damage. And uh, yet I can't see where it, it folds. I mean, you think it'd be like a coat hanger after you bend it 50 times, yep. bink, it's There'd gone. be an impression. No, but uh, this car is a couple of years old and it's been used and driven and I don't see that. So it's pretty amazing, yep. which means the paint also has to be flexible Correct. as well, doesn't it? Yeah, there's an additive that has to be in there so that it doesn't crack yeah, the Yeah, that, that's unbelievable. Uh, let's, so, let's see what it looks like from the back here. Uh, there's a button on this side. Oh, there we go. Oh, well, it's actually pretty deep, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. If you were delivering basketball, you could go you could. get two or three in there, but yep. Okay, let's close that up again. This does not open at all. No. No, okay. It can, but with a lot of tools. How does one it. service this? Does this, does that? Carefully. <laughs> does this come <laughs> off or you do everything from the bottom? Yeah, no, so, so all, all this body work is removable um, and, and we Good basically- Good heaven, so you yeah. gotta take this, wow. 
Depends on what you have to do underneath the car. I mean, there is a, an under tray that can be removed, but no, I mean, if you need to start working up top here, right. um, basically this whole clamshell comes off and then that piece can be removed as well to work on it. Okay. So they give you a little bottle of touch up when you get to <laughs> <laughs> I, Yeah, I wouldn't even know where to start. Now are these, is that a one for gas, one a charging port? Is that what that is? Believe it or not, one's for gas and one's for oil. Oh, okay. So does this have a plug-in? It element? does, but okay. the element plugs into the wall and then this car actually just drives over top of it. So it's induction charging. Oh, okay, okay. Like, like, basically like what you have in the console of your car, you put your phone on top. Correct, yeah. And, and does, does something, how do you know when you're right over it? Does it? There's a, on the screen, as you're okay. pulling over it, it kind of guides you and almost like, imagine like a mid-air oh. refueling the gotcha, plane. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. And you just leave it on that all yep. the time. Well, let's open the doors. Let's see, just... Oh, there you go, look at that. Okay, well look, it's a very nice interior. Yeah. Now, this is the prototype. Did the finished cars have some things that this one doesn't and vice versa? Or? No, so in, in terms of, of you know, technology and all the things that are into it, uh, it they're all the same. Um, the difference is uh, the, the badge behind the headrest. Right. Instead of having one of, uh, however many of 106, it just says Albert. Right. And then behind the headrest, there's a special logo that's woven into the right. back of the seat. And obviously it's a three-seater, you sit in the middle. Yep. Because when you sit in the center, it is so nice to drive because you're in the center of the road. Yeah. You know, I, I drive so many modern cars. I love my Ford GT, but there's this A-pillar here. And I, I always feel like there's a kid on a bicycle right here. Right there. So I'm, I always have to go I'm drive. I, I just have to do it, which doesn't sound like a lot of work. But when you're driving, you, you're just constantly checking because you've got this blind. With this, there's no blind spot. Everything is behind you. Yep. Your A-pillars are way back here. Does it even have an A-pillar? I guess that would be an A-pillar. It does. But you've got yeah. so much glass. I yeah. mean, all around you, if you look everywhere, it, it's glass. I like the Ms. McLaren theme of simplicity. I don't have 100 buttons on the steering wheel. Nope. I get a little annoyed at that. Where's the white? Oh, here's the white, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, zero yeah. buttons on the wheel, just yeah. the, the yeah. paddles, and then there's just stocks behind allow you it. to drive, exactly. Does anything in the front open? Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely, yeah. Let me see. Oh, here it is. Here, I got it right here. Let's see. And just at the opposite side. There you go. So if you want to take a toothbrush, preferably not electric, because <laughs> you have to fit, but yeah, that's all right. Yeah. But then you've got more luggage. Isn't there more luggage? Is there more somewhere? Nope, else? just the two. Just oh, the just two those two. Oh, yeah. I see. I thought like the your F1. F your F1's got a cool yeah, yeah, the, right, the right. bypass behind the seat. But then seat. you've got another one. Is that a little compartment there? So it's usually there. I yeah. left it off here. So this one's empty. But what is behind here, and it's more of a tribute than anything, but usually it is the gold tool kit. Oh, the Just gold. like the titanium nitride yeah. one that's with your F1. Yeah. You know, even though nobody's going to work on a speed tail with hand tools. Yeah, let me get my screwdriver. <laughs> Hang on a minute. So that's usually what's kept underneath there. But it's, oh, okay. uh, it's in safekeeping. I'm sure you know what it costs to replace one. Actually, they're impossible to replace. Right. So those are actually kept in a safe. Very nice. Oh, that's funny. And this here is... The, this is just... This is, yeah, just underneath okay. there. And then you've got behind here. Oh, you've got another little... Yep, one. another little compartment. So extinguisher and uh and just right. a kit right okay and this is actually pretty deep too i mean you could get a weekend bag in there there's actually speed tail luggage not a three-day weekend two no days. no no exactly yeah short short weekend they get the speed uh speed tail bag okay yep cool all right very nice all right cool very good so, okay bring that down oh yep um actually another kind of nice touch if you look at all the modern McLarens, yeah. the way their badges, it's all monochromatic and only the F1 had the red pinstripe around right. it. And they did it just for this car. The so this is, badge. as we said before, an homage to the, to the F1. Oh, there's yeah. where it says, you see it says prototype right there. So, so this being the first one would probably make it certainly the most valuable. One of 106, correct? And, well, this sits outside the 106, so this would be the- Oh, that's right. You know, depending on how you look at it, it's either the, the car zero or car 107. Now, all speed tails have been spoken for, correct? Correct, or and there, delivered. There are none uh, currently for sale, so. No. Nope. Unless you got somebody needs some fast cash and wants to flip it. Right. Good luck, because I'm sure that every collector will have one of these that can afford it. So it's, uh, it's impressive, and it really is a, a classic design study, you know. The Countach looks like the 80s, <laughs> you know. It does. At any point. Whereas this looks like... 
the future, no matter what era you're in. Yeah. And this is real aerodynamics, you know. A Prius very aerodynamic. Sometimes <laughs> it's hard to make aerodynamics attractive. It is. You yeah. know, because true aerodynamics is not that attractive. You go, oh, it looks kind of weird. Right. Like a Prius is a nice car, but it, it doesn't excite you, you know. No. To get it to have this kind of shape and this kind of flow and still be an exciting automobile, it takes some, some real talent. It takes it, a team. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Well, can we take it for a ride? Absolutely. Okay, so I guess we just kind of, I'll walk right into this. There we go. built it as a comfort version of a P1. You know, I know. Have a P1 Sport, oh. P1 Touring. Yep. You know? That actually would be very cool. How many McLarens a year you move through Beverly Hills? Depends on, because, you know, obviously it depends on what they've got out at the time, right. but typically 120. I think the highest we hit was like 150 or 160. It's crazy. That was back when they had a bunch of different variants of the 570 and right. the 720. Right. Now, with Artura, you know, kind of not really being delivered. We only have GT, uh, and then we have like, you know, kind of a trickled, a couple 720s. Well, I like that 720, that is a nice- It's a great car. Nice handling car, fast. I'm surprised you don't have one of those. Well, I got a P1. Yeah, like, that's you know, true, yeah, you're right. When given the option, that's probably what you'd rather drive. Yeah. yeah. talking mm -hmm. my favorite thing about the f1 is that the a pillars are behind you yeah but this one the a pillars are actually in front of you having yeah. having not sat in it before i just assumed it was the same but, yeah but it's not well i can definitely say you do feel the effects of the aerodynamics oh yeah because you don't slow down obviously you slow down right from momentum at normal frame, but it, it does really slip through the air yeah it's extremely smooth and it's quiet i mean yeah. You know, if you open the windows, you'll hear it drumming. But when yeah. you seal the windows and you have the air conditioner on, I mean, it's a loud car, but you don't hear anything in nope. it because you just see me. And when I take my foot off the gas, you know, I still remain at just about the I mean, obviously, just going through the air, you're going to lose a certain amount. But, yeah. You know, when the Stanley Brothers with the Stanley Steamer, when they set their record of 127 miles an hour in 1906, Jesus, there, Jesus. there were aerodynamics, but they were fluid dynamics. Yeah. What they did was they went to a boat yard and they pulled boats through the water with one of those pulls that lets you know how many pounds you're pulling. Yeah. And then they went to every canoe company in New England. And when they got to the Lakeview Canoe Company, their canoes required the least amount of pull to pull them through the water. So they put two canoes, one on top of the other, with the engine in the inside, and that was their aerodynamics, allowed them to go 127 miles. No an hour. way. Yeah, with a steam car in 1906. You know, and it's so funny because it's you know it's referred to as CFD, yeah. computational fluid dynamics. Right. Right. So. Yeah. But it's kind of cool. Wow, 1906. That's. And I imagine crazy. driving this in the rain would be interesting because the water would just bead off. Right. Of it. Yeah. You'd see it all too with all this glass. You'd see it just yeah. rush over. Well, you know, it's so funny because so many cars look the way they do just to look the way they do. Correct. I mean, I like this one because it looks this way because it's the way it has to look to achieve that level of right. aerodynamics. So there's a purpose to it as opposed to just... Function over yeah, form. Yeah, Like a Countach looks cool, but it's obviously... Right. <laughs> you, you, but that's its sole purpose. Yeah, that's just to look cool, yeah. Yeah. That actually is cool. Yeah. Well, it's quieter than the, in the P1 and, yeah. and certainly more comfortable. 
but the P1 is meant to be also a track car, so it's not right. really fair. Yeah, a lot of and, race. And the race sheer cars. visceral force of the P1 is what's really exciting. Yeah. Because this is actually more horsepower, what, 1,000, what, 20, 25? Uh, yeah, yeah, 1,036. So yeah, slightly more than the P1. 1,036, and the P1's really 903. Yeah. But it's more geared for for talk and oh yeah i mean you look at the p1 the only leather surfaces are the seats right and there's like two two pieces on the dash and a little right. door pocket it's just so how many times have you had three people in your f1 oh I, we do it quite a bit actually it's fun yeah I take the two other people out you know but i'll tell you a difference in the p1 if i'm in it and the phone rings, I press the active button, which cuts the hybrid. Yep. And that's really the only time I can have the conversation yep. and talk. Yeah. Uh, with this, oh, it's fine. This is really a yeah. long distance, you know, ultimate touring, you know, touring, yeah. touring te teardrop, I guess you'd call yeah, it. Touring teardrop, I like that. Well, I mean, I think this is a car that you will see at Pebble Beach in the year 2121, you know what I yeah. mean? Because, oh, here's what they did back in the day to be aerodynamic. Yep. And, I mean, I believe this is so aerodynamic, it probably wouldn't meet a lot of safety standards. Yeah, you know that's a I good mean? point. So that's one of my two favorite years for car design, 1932 and 1966. Because by 32, cars are here to stay. Yeah. And they were so desperate, they had 16 cylinders, 12 cylinders, yeah. straight eights, V8. They had every, every kind of dream situation and every kind of design that they thought would sell. And then 66, at least in America, was the last, last year of pure design. Where you, yeah. Like you couldn't bring a mirror in past a certain date because right. the headlights and you know, all that kind of stuff. The golden era of car design. Yeah, yeah, because it was just all design. Yeah. Even a Ferrari GTO looks aerodynamic, but yeah. it's really not. Yeah, no, this is, a, it's impressive. And it's a looker boy. Oh, people, yeah. I wonder if the next gen will be called McLaren P2. Yeah, it's funny. I, I mean, we should start seeing that car soon. Is that what it's going to be called? I, I don't know. I don't know. But they, well, right now, it's I think it's P18 is what the that's internal. That's not yeah, what yeah. they would call it. But yeah, no, I am curious what they're going to call it. But it's uh, it looks really impressive from the stuff that I've seen. This gathers speed quickly. It does. Yes. The P1 is all, it's like an yeah, animal clawing yeah, at the yeah. ground. This thing is like a panther, it just... Absolutely. It's just extremely smooth, extremely quick. You'd almost think it was all-wheel drive in some ways, the way that it does the yeah, acceleration. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really, really yeah. quite fast. It's kind of like the P1 with a velvet glove on. Yes, yes, that's, that's actually a great way of putting it. It is like a grown-up version of the P1. Yes. A little more mature. Yeah. <laughs> a little more comfortable, a little quieter. Less of a bruiser. Right. A little right. more gentrified. Yeah, still knock you out. But. Yeah. Paris, thanks for bringing this by. Absolutely. My I pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thank McLaren. I asked for this a long time ago if they had one around, and the gentleman was kind enough to let us borrow his. Uh, you, you know, it's impressive. It's, 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 it's stunning to look at scientifically. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. The aerodynamics are very cool. That foldable paint, is, it seems just amazing to me. Uh, the way the, it doesn't crack. I, I, I don't even know how that works. Yeah. But uh, very good. Yeah, you can see it. It feels very much like a McLaren. If, if you are not a, uh, I think any McLaren owner would feel very comfortable with this, except you'd be going a little bit faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>